This is the seventh lecture for the animal chiropractic class, the uh, ethics and legal considerations portion. In this class, I want to talk uh, briefly about responding to errors uh, and what to do when things go wrong. Now, 90% of this is just good common sense, but I think it's helpful to give you a quick reminder. Um, one thing to keep in mind as well is that if you've followed the informed consent process and developed a good rapport with the client, uh, responding to errors is a whole lot easier than if you have a strained or non-existent relationship with the client. So what do you do when things go wrong? First thing to keep in mind is to take care of the patient. Now, that should always be your first priority no matter what's going on. What can you do to help the patient? Uh, make the patient comfortable, help the patient recover. Uh, uh, you know, that needs to be your number one priority. And as tempting as it may be, or as easy as it may be to panic when something goes wrong, this is the time that you need to be uh, the most professional and most controlled. You've got to keep your emotions in check. Uh, there will be time for you to get upset and to panic at a later time, but at least it while you're handling the patient and dealing with the client, you need to be composed as much as possible. Once you've provided for the patient, the second step is to figure out what's going on. Compose yourself. Uh, if you aren't aware of what happened or what went wrong, you might want to communicate or briefly discuss the situation uh, with other people who might have been involved, other people who might have been in the room, or other people who might be familiar with the animal. And once you have a, a reasonable handle or reasonable understanding of what happened, uh, next comes what's probably the most difficult part, which is talking to the client. Uh, it's important to tell the client what happened, uh, be objective about it, be caring about it, uh, don't, uh, don't exaggerate uh, what the prospects are, uh, be honest about what the likely, likely prognosis is. If it's appropriate, you should apologize. Now, if you're covered by malpractice insurance, you may want to confirm with your insurance carrier that they're okay with you apologizing. The reason I think it's important to apologize when it's appropriate is many times the uh, uh, client is looking for nothing more than an apology, looking for the person who made a mistake to accept responsibility for that mistake. Um, in, that, in that situation, that apology may prevent the client uh, from going to see a lawyer or pursuing a malpractice claim. But if you're going to apologize, make sure you understand how to do it appropriately. Okay, there is a big difference between saying, I'm sorry this happened. Uh, that doesn't accept any responsibility for what happened. Or I'm sorry this mistake happened. That gets a little bit closer because you're acknowledging that a mistake occurred, but you're still not accepting personal responsibility. The most effective apologies are going to be something along the lines of, I'm sorry that I made this mistake, or that my team under my supervision made this mistake, and I take full responsibility for it. That's the kind of apology that will be effective. But again, you want to confirm if you are covered by malpractice insurance, you don't want to make an apology that is going to make it more difficult for them to defend the case if they think there is a defense. Once you've told the client what happened, uh, discuss what happens next. What's the plan of care for the patient? What follow-up is required? What recovery is required? Uh, uh, you know, what do we do as far as our next steps? Uh, again, being accountable, accepting responsibility, uh, doing what you can to make things right, uh, goes a long way to helping the client understand and accept that animal chiropractic is not perfect. Uh, like any kind of health care, sometimes things just go wrong. 
Uh, it's also helpful if, if it's an appropriate situation to discuss how you could prevent, how you plan to prevent this same type of mistake from happening again in the future. Now, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, for example, uh, surgeons will sometimes amputate the wrong limb. So the doctors figured out that one way to prevent that is to have the patient right on the limb that's supposed to be operated on, uh, that that's the right limb uh, or that's the right side. And that prevents the surgeon from getting so busy or careless or, or occupied that they forget to check whether they're supposed to be working on the patient's left side or right side. Uh, so something as simple as that in explaining this is how we're going to prevent this from happening again in the future can go again a long way to helping the, the client understand that you are accepting responsibility and that you're going to make it better in the future. Uh, some guidelines for making the disclosure. Choose a quiet place. Uh, certainly if you're at a livestock show you, you don't want to be doing this out in the open where everybody can hear and observe the client's reaction. Uh, you want to do it in a place where there's no distractions. If you have a cell phone, turn it off. Uh, we've all been in conversations with people where they have their cell phone uh, face up and you can kind of tell that every time there's a, a text message, they get distracted and, and they, they look away from you. You do not want to communicate to the client that you're being distracted. You want to communicate to the client that you are focused completely and totally on their, their animal uh, and their situation. Uh, if you have staff members that might be inclined to interrupt you, make sure they understand that they should not interrupt during this conversation. If the uh, client doesn't already understand that this is a bad situation, uh, start with some kind of warning like, I have difficult news, uh, before you walk in and, and, and drop the uh, absolute worst news on them. Uh, as you're communicating, pay attention to the nonverbal messages that you are sending. Uh, make eye contact with the client. There's a big difference between staring at the floor as you talk or staring at a piece of paper and looking the client in the eye and discussing what happened and accepting your level of responsibility for it. Uh, sit at the same level as the client. Sometimes doctors and chiropractors have a tendency to uh, sit at a higher level than their patients to kind of show their, their control. This is not a situation where you want to show your dominance or that you're the alpha male in the room. This is the time that you want to sit at the client's level and, and communicate that we're peers at this particular time. Respond to any nonverbal cues from the client. Uh, if they need space, if they need time, if they need to compose themselves, if they need a Kleenex, uh, be sure you respond appropriately to those cues from them. As you communicate to the client, you don't want to just come in and spend two minutes telling them that something horrible has happened. You want to, as much as possible, facilitate a discussion Give the client an opportunity to ask questions. If they're not ready to ask questions at that particular moment, if they want to uh, think about and process this information, give them an opportunity to communicate again to ask those questions. Uh, finally, you should also be sure and discuss with the client, when are we going to talk again? Uh, client may be thinking that you should be communicating with them every day until the situation is resolved. You may be thinking that you're going to communicate with them again in two weeks. If you walk out of the room without discussing that, what's going to happen is they're going to call you for every day for the next two weeks and they're going to be offended that you're not returning their calls. So be sure you discuss with the client uh, not only what happens with the patient next, but also discuss with the client what follow-up communications will occur. So again, most of this is, is very common sense. There's nothing earth-shattering in, in this discussion about responding to errors. 
but I think it's helpful sometimes for us to be reminded of these common sense rules so that when we're faced with these situations where we don't think or may not be thinking as clearly as we should, we can do a better job of taking care of our patient and a better job of communicating with our client. Uh, we'll come back in the next video and we'll talk about advertising rules, which are uh, almost as confusing as the licensing rules.